guys welcome or welcome back to my channel today i have a fun little video idea it's not unique it's not original but i thought it would be fun because i'm still slightly in my reading slump i would say i'm probably 75 percent out of it i'm enjoying reading but i'm not dying to read a book like i usually am so i'm almost out of there and i thought it would be a really good idea to do this video to help me fully get out of my reading slump like the title says these are some of my 2024 most anticipated book releases so this could either go really well or go really sour so the first book I've already decided. I'm not going to tell you the three books because I want it to be like an element of surprise for you guys but the first book we're going to pick up is Never by Jessa Hastings. I feel like this is probably pretty on brand. This is Jessa's first fantasy book. It's a Peter Pan retelling. That is all I know. The back sounds really interesting. This cover is beautiful but i'm gonna read you the back so i don't mess up anything it sounds really cute it sounds really heartbreaking i know jess is about to break my freaking heart in this book never is an awfully long time growing up daphne always knew peter pan would come for her the way he'd come for her mother and her grandmother wendy before that the darling girls their stories are all the same the forever young boy at their window after their 13th birthday in the shimmering magical land behind a star when peter doesn't show up to daphne until she's 17 inexplicably full grown and with no excuse for his tardiness, Daphne doesn't know what to think. So she has always been told that Peter Pan is her destiny. It's beyond choice to take his hand and leap into the stars, no matter what comes next. But in Neverland, Peter's true colors begin to show. One moment, he's making Daphne's heart flutter, and the next, he's forgotten her entirely. So when Daphne stumbles into the path of Jameson Hook, the pirate son of Peter's nemesis, she lets herself get swept up in his vulgar charm, despite the warning signs. Both boys are trouble, and both have dangerous secrets about this strange fantasy land they call home and if she loses her heart to either one Daphne might just lose herself too if we speculate a little bit besties this this kind of looks more like a pirate than um Peter Pan if you're asking me so I feel like Jameson Hook is endgame no matter how heartbreaking he is endgame that is that is my theory guys let me know if you guys also kind of felt this way but there are things in here in like the beginning of the book right that are catching me off guard i'm like a little baffled like oh did she really say that did she really write that in a, in a book it's a little weird you know daphne is giving pick me vibes currently <laughs> i hope there's some character development because this is crazy <laughs> The way Jess is writing Peter Pan <laughs> is so good though. Like her writing of his personality and like, you can just really feel his vibes. <laughs> it's funny because I'm not that far into the book. I'm only on page 31 right now and I already have so much to talk about. Like we just met Jameson Hook, the son of Captain Hook. He's already so charming. Peter is Peter Pan. What's also kind of amusing to me is I kind of, see the connection between Magnolia and Daphne in this book. They have this kind of youthful personality, just the way I imagine and hear them speaking. They're very similar and their personality right now is kind of similar. I don't know, I just think it's kind of entertaining. I'm enjoying it so far. I think it's a fun read. I do have one thought about the fantasy. It's that since this is her first fantasy book, I've noticed that she doesn't really dive too much into the world building. I think she relies on the fact that most people know the story of Peter Pan and have seen the movies and know what like the imagery is so she doesn't really go that much into it. I wish she did kind of go a little bit more descriptive. Written oh. in the sand. It's so funny my reaction was her reaction. My eyes go wide in horror. Would wash away so fast and that no I think I already know who I like better. Chapter three. Okay, I wanna read you guys a portion of this paragraph. It's not gonna spoil anything, but I thought it was the cutest cutest little quote and i'm obsessed with it so okay he was one of those men who believed women were the superior of the sexes that the sun rose and set purely for the honor to shine on my grandmother's face <laughs> imagine a man saying oh, the sun rose to honor you to honor your beauty jessa hastings does it again 
there is absolutely no freaking competition on who Daphne should choose between the two love interests. Like there's no competition, absolutely no way she doesn't choose this person. I'm on page 77 right now. I'm really, really enjoying the book. It's not like your typical fantasy, you know, like where the girl goes and tries to save the world or all that. No, she's just a teenage girl going to Neverland and experiencing all of these like mythical, magical creatures like mermaids and fairies and fae. And I just think it's so fun to read. The banter is funny. Peter Pan is a little bit strange, I will admit. I'm really honestly enjoying just how Jessa is taking this story and making it her own. I think I did get to a little bit of the part where it's a little bit controversial. I don't want to talk too heavily on it because me, myself, I am not a Native American, but as someone that is a person of color, I don't think the way Jessa portrayed that scene was very offensive in my opinion because at the end of the day, we are all just human. I think for our character to question this other character about his background and his culture kind of shows that her from earth and from society has made her question everybody depending on the way they look but people in this realm with peter pan and the fairies and pirates they don't care about that. They look at it as we're just all human, right? And I love that concept. I can see how it can be a little bit of a misunderstanding because Daphne is laying it on kind of strong. I think that might have been a little bit of what the controversy was, but I am going to keep my eye out for the rest of the story. I, I, I literally can't. I can't deal with these mood swings. I knew something, something is so weird. Something is up. Like, suspicious. I knew it! I, I had my suspicions. actually kind of hilarious though okay ignore my shiny skin my skin has been super dry because of the cold weather and like wind i think so i put a bunch of aquifer on my face so it's super glossy as you can see we are not in new jersey we are currently actually visiting our family in florida and we're in my parents New house. I was reading today and I haven't talked to you guys about this book. Really sat down and talked to you and give you my thoughts on it so far. I'm currently on page 202, chapter 12. A little bit over halfway through the book. I really am enjoying this book in the sense that I enjoy Jessa Hastings' writing. It's not for everyone and I think her characters can be super insufferable and just so annoying to read. So for the Magnolia Park series, I hate to compare series that authors write, but I I can't help it. I love the Magnolia Magnolia Park series and their characters, they are completely flawed, 100% flawed, super toxic, but you can't help but love them and kind of root for them to work on their mental health and work on their relationships. But in this book, I feel like the toxicity and the annoying parts of these characters are not as excusable. I think the main reason is because these characters are just meeting for the first time. They haven't known each other their entire lives. They haven't had these shared bond traumas or like going through how to heal individually to be together and have these kind of friendships. They just met. Daphne, the main character, Peter Pan, and Jameson Hook, they all just met. So I think the relationship aspect is a little bit different 
And the characters remind me a lot of the Magnolia Parks universe because they do really, really hurtful things when they're hurt. Daphne is the type of girl to get mad at Peter or Jem, James, Jameson, whatever you want to call him. She gets mad at them for hurting her feelings, which very fair. She kind of does the same thing. It's so, it's so back and forth and kind of hypocritical. I don't know. There's just a lot. And I feel like that's, that's very similar to Magnolia Parks. And I was wanting more fantasy. I kind of want more of the background of Neverland and the fantasy aspect of it. We're getting a little bit, which is really interesting. I'm really liking that aspect, but the relationships are really throwing me off because I can't root for them. I can't root for how they are acting. I can't excuse it and I can't not excuse it, justify it. It doesn't fit with the fantasy environment because I don't know I feel like we should be learning about more of the world building so far I think this book would probably be a four or lower so far but I really hope that we dive more into what's going on because there is something suspicious going on Kind of infuriating to read. Infuriating. Hey guys, so I am back from Florida. I did finish Never by Jessa Hastings, and I have so 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 many thoughts on this some are good some are bad i do not know where i fall in my rating still and it's been an entire day since i finished this book where do i even start i've already told you the gist of the story and some of my thoughts about how the characters are very similar to the magnolia parks characters but then they also have very different backgrounds gotta go into if i like them or not truthfully I do not like the characters. I like Jameson, but there are some things that he says that are quite foul, even for someone that has his feelings hurt. I don't know if you can go back on it. Like, it's just, how do you, how do you get past someone saying something like that? You know, that was a little bit of a, hard pill to swallow. I did not like Daphne. I feel like she didn't really have her own personality. She was very adamant and kind of egotistic. She saw herself as super clever, super smart, but then she would turn around and do the dumbest things. Maybe that's just a way a character can be like young and stupid and naive where they think they're super smart, but they make the dumbest decisions. I can get behind that, right? Because she is a young character. But what I really, really hated was how naive she was. She refused refuses, I mean like refuses to think anything horrible about Peter Pan. Peter Pan is not a likable character in this book, but people are blatantly telling you this is what Peter Pan is doing. She was just like, no, not Peter. Peter would never do that. He's just a child. He may be just misunderstood and he doesn't realize what he's doing. No, it was infuriating to read because she constantly defended him and constantly went back. And I understand that there was a concept in this book where makes her kind of forgetful and forgiving but she did not have the same energy for Jameson like she would defend to the end of time for Peter Pan but she would not trust Jameson Hook even the slightest there was no character development Daphne for one did not believe in Peter Pan in the very beginning of the book because she's an older teenager and she's not gonna believe in fairy tales that her grandmothers tell her and then he flies in and she's like oh my god he is real let me just go to Neverland with him and then fall in love with him or like be so infatuated with him with this what if we are fated to be together why are you so obsessed with the idea of being fated for one another if you didn't even think you existed or have the like See, this makes me feel like I have more bad than good, so the rating isn't going to be that great. There's so much more to go through. Let's go back to the fantasy part, the plot of the story. There is no plot. I love that about the Magnolia Park series because I love how it's so character driven and you're just following the characters. I know what I'm signing up for when I'm reading those. But this one, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I assumed a little bit too much. I thought this was really going to be a fantasy book. It's not. It's Magnolia Park set in a Peter Pan world. It's so sad because it could 
could have been so good. The fantasy aspects could have been so good if Jessa really dove into it more. If we found out more about Neverland or the background of Peter Pan or what is going on, I feel like the conflicts came out of nowhere. There's one character, one character that shows up in the last portion of the book and is the villain, and we didn't hear about him until the later half of the book. Get that gets solved super quickly, and then you're like, okay, well now there's no like conflict. I don't get it. I don't get what is the fantasy? Just the fact that he's Peter Pan and that they're in Neverland, is that it? Why are we bringing up points that could be such good tension and plot? for a fantasy story, but then not really going into it. Don't understand what, where the fondness and like the liking started from. Yes, Jameson is funny and yes, he's witty, but like, is that it? Is he just cause he's attractive? Like what's going on, you know? It just feels, I'm ranting, which makes me feel like it's gonna be in the two to three star range. No higher than a three star, but I think I would still recommend this book. If someone told me, just imagine the Magnolia Parks universe in the Peter Pan setting, I think I might have liked this book a little more because I would have known what I was getting myself into. I'm so sorry, Jessa. I know you're probably never gonna see this, but if you do, I love and adore the Magnolia Parks universe. Adore the characters. But I suppose never is just not my cup of tea. Will I be continuing this series? Um, <laughs> why am I like this? Why would I do this to myself? I probably would only for the fact that now I know what I'm to expect and maybe I'll enjoy it a little more. I do not hate this book, did not particularly enjoy it, but would still recommend if you know what you're getting yourself into. Now that we got that over with, I am going to start on my second book for this video. I told myself I needed something more high risk, I needed something more tension, I needed something more energetic and more fantasy and more adventure. I've decided on reading Iron Flame by Rebecca Yaros for my second book in this video and this has been one of my most anticipated because Fourth Wing's cliffhanger really got me excited on where this book was gonna head. Fourth Wing was just such a fast-paced, fun read. It was not the most intensive when it comes to the fantasy and the plot, so it was easy. I think this is a really easy fantasy book for people that want to get into fantasy, so I just needed something action-packed, adventurous, fun and fast paced and I think this is gonna do it for me. This is the second book if you guys, I'm sure you guys have heard of this book. I'm not even gonna, <laughs> not even gonna go into it. Humans have the memories of gnats. I like Terrence's personality. He's like always so quirky, but also just so moody. Guys, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, okay, let me show you vaguely what I have on my bookshelves right now. I, you're on a tripod, so this is a little bit difficult. But like, I'm obsessed with it. I'm so obsessed with it. So I got this bookshelf like two days ago. Hold on, let me fix this. All right, so I got this bookshelf yesterday. Could not resist. I had to put it together and put my books up. I didn't want to look at my books on the floor anymore. I'm so excited to get my other books and my other bookshelves, but that's not what this video is about. This video, if you guys forgot, you know, because clearly I forgot about this video, it's reading my most anticipated books of 2024, and I was in the middle of Iron Flame. I'm on page 285, chapter 32, and I realized, hmm, wasn't I supposed to be talking to you guys about this book? I'm literally almost halfway through and I have not spoken to you guys once at all. I have so much to say. I, I don't know why I didn't sit, talk to you guys sooner than this, but I have so much to say about this book. So far, I think I like this book more than Fourth Wing. Is that an unpopular opinion? 
because I don't know. I don't know the reviews. I haven't seen any reviews on this book, so I don't know. I think because Fourth Wing is the first book in a series, it's a lot more world building and meeting new characters and like learning about the college itself and the courses. So it, it was interesting and it was fun and it was fast paced. But this one, this one, you already know the characters and like obviously you meet a little bit more of the characters. You get more in depth of the characters you already know and I'm loving the side characters in this book. I'm so scared and I'm not attached to them yet but like I'm so scared. You would think after Fourth Wing, not that many more people are gonna die willy nilly from this school, you know, just doing trials. I was sorely wrong because people are just dying left and right and I'm so scared. I'm so scared. There is not one side character that I'm willing to let go at this point. Something is wired really, really, really crazily in Rebecca Yaros's head because she can just kill characters off in one sentence and then they just like breeze through it. Like we didn't have a whole relationship with this character and you're just gonna be like, oh, they're dead. Like. The more you read into this book, the more you're gonna like and know the side characters. The tension of the possibility of them just dying the next page. I'm so terrified of that. I'm just so terrified. Other than that, I'm really enjoying the like more politics in this book. It's more high stake. Wow, how can you get more high stake than the first book? And it's just constantly moving. New things are happening. And I think what's fun about it is that we already have the dragon part. You know, we're already at the dragon part, at the adventure, at the fighting. This one really goes into the actual plot and the nitty gritty of the politics in this world. So I'm really enjoying it. I completely forgot about talking to you guys. I just just sped through this. This is exactly what I was looking for after reading Never by Jessa Hastings. Some semblance of a plot, so this one is really, really doing it. Am I gonna regret saying that this is gonna be more likable than Fourth Wing? I just got to a part that I'm like, I feel like I'm gonna cry. So I'm taking a breather real quick because I really, I read the sentence and I was like, oh, I'm gonna cry. I'm really hoping this one character doesn't disappoint me even more than they already have. Like, I'm really praying. Like, this isn't even anger anymore. This is just so sad. I'm so sad. <laughs> God. Guys, it's getting so good. Like, it's getting so good. I'm on part two, which is page 335. It's, I'm so excited to see where this is going. Like, I don't think I've been this excited about a book in a hot minute. Like, Powerless was really good. I was really intrigued throughout the entire book and like, I love the characters and all, but like this, this is on another level right now. Like, I'm stoked to see how this all plays out. You know that feeling of like satisfaction when you read a book and you're like, oh, I wish this was gonna happen or uh, I wish it played out this way. This is doing that, but better. It's exceeding my expectations of what I want to happen. Good morning. I absolutely love how overconfident and narcissistic Taryn is, as he should, as he should. He is one of the biggest, the second biggest dragon on the continent. He deserves to be super confident, and I love that it always shows. He's always like, Ugh, like, I chose you. Get a hold of yourself. Like, I chose you. Stop being a little whip and get this shit done. I love him. I love him. His relationship with Andarna, it's so funny. It's like older brother, little sister kind of vibe. The way they like bicker is so funny. Like how Andarna is literally just a teenage girl trying to stomp down, humble him, you know? There was one time Violet asked Taryn a question and he was like, you expect me to know that? And then Darna just interrupts them and, and says, well, if she asks, obviously she thinks that. So it's <laughs> she, like her sass and her attitude is so good. Uh, if this person does not get saved, if this person dies, they are one of my favorite characters. Like, I. They're one of my favorite characters, and if they die, I am gonna be so distraught for the rest of today. The loyalty, the found family, it's so good. I love a good found family trope, and this book is giving. 
it is giving. But then it also hurts so much because because there's so many people, so many characters that you just don't want anything bad to happen to. But you know something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> This is like one of the only things that would make me cry without fail anytime this is in a story. Like when this concept is involved without fail, it makes me cry. <laughs> Something is suspicious. What? What? Okay, good morning. I finished Iron Flame last night, but I needed some time to kind of cope and digest everything that I read in the last 50 pages because I feel like it all came out of left field and I don't know if it was just me or it was the writing. It felt like she was writing to have things all add up to one conclusion, but that one conclusion was still kind of confusing. I don't know if I just read it too fast and didn't comprehend the information that I was digesting or it was just the writing style of it that I just did not get. We learned something but then we also really didn't learn anything because now I have more questions and I'm kind of confused. I don't know if that was the whole point of it. I'm supposed to be confused and we learn more in the next book. I don't know. I was really really hoping that this was going to be a five star read. It was so so close to be a five star read but I think towards the end when I started getting more confused and it felt like a fever dream. That is exactly, you know what? That is exactly exactly how it felt. Reading the last 75 to 50 pages of this book, that big part, it felt like a fever dream. <laughs> I still really enjoyed it. I think I'm still gonna give this a 4.75, just like the first book. I believe I gave the first book a 4.75, maybe a 4.5. It was really close, like really, really close to a five star read. The only reason why it's not a five star is because of the reasons I talked to you guys before this. It's nice to be confused in a book, but when there's no resolution or if I don't feel satisfied in like having theories, I don't like that. I would at least want to have a theory in my head on what's going on, but in this, I'm just like, uh, what just happened like did that actually just happen what's going on right now like why 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 did we lead up to this i'm really happy that i read this i blew through this when is the third one coming out do we know when the third one's coming out yet because um i would like to read it i would like to read it right now thank you the next book i'm gonna do for this video of my 2024 most anticipated releases is ruthless vows by rebecca ross 